While Bob is feeding firefighters, Cheryl Jackson is feeding anyone who needs it. Well, the Giving Movement is an organization where I founded it because of my mother, seeing my parents give so much, my mother and my father. When I lost my father, I wanted to do something to honor my mother, Minnie Ewan, who is like a living legacy to me and a legend, in, in my opinion. And so I founded this so that I could teach not only the old, but go into schools and teach the young people about what the Giving Movement is and what giving can be and what it can do for you if you give on a consistent basis. It's amazing. Minnie's Food Pantry, we opened up about a year and a half ago and when I started telling people I'm going to start a food pantry in West Plano, people said that I was really crazy. I remember the first month with Minnie's Food Pantry, we fed about 25, 50 families and we thought we were just doing great. And if you fast forward it now, 18 months later, um, this month we'll feed over a thousand people. We've distributed at Minnie's Food Pantry over 600,000 pounds of food this year alone. We are on a record pace. We probably will end up with over a million pounds of food distributed by the end of this year. I mean, we have what we call a client choice pantry. And basically, we don't just hand a person a box. That's easy to do. But we believe that they should be given a choice. So when they come in, they fill out a form that tells me all the canned goods and vegetables that they eat. And our volunteers are back here filling out what they say they eat. And then when they actually hit the front door, we give them a basket and they're actually able to go around and shop. And it's their choice. What do you want, Cap'n Crunch cereal, Cookie Crisp cereal? And you should see the looks on the people's faces that we serve. I mean, they are so grateful. They will stop in the middle of the pantry and literally cry on our shoulders and say thank you. Today it's a phenomenal event. Um, it's the um, annual Thanksgiving giveaway and it's called From Our Table to Yours. And basically for Thanksgiving, because there were a lot of times when I didn't have food, I wanted the same name brands that I had on my table. I wanted that to be on the table because people think that I'm crazy when I say I really want name brand items in my pantry. I'm like, this is what I eat, so when you donate, can you donate this? But I just want the best. I think if we're gonna give, we should give our best. So today there are volunteers from all over. It's a community effort from churches, St. Elizabeth Ann Seton, their church. Last year we were in the elements. This year the church came to us and said, look, let us use, let you, we want to offer you our gymnasium so you don't have to be outside in the cold, screaming and yelling and hollering down. The, so we've got over 45 volunteers that have come together and they're doing everything from a turkey, including a turkey, a ham, macaroni and cheese, mashed potatoes, corn, green beans, um, Duncan Hines cake mix, and then with the frosting as well. Velveeta cheese for the macaroni, because you know, I, I like real cheese on my macaroni. And, and, and including just, I mean, fresh breads, everything. They're boxing it up and the families are lined up outside and they're ready to come in and they will feast. And what I, I could have chosen to feed people on Thanksgiving day, but why would I when I can give them a meal let them take that home and be with their families. And they are so grateful. I mean, the spirit of the place is just amazing. I mean, there are people crying outside, there are people hugging, and you know, there's smiles everywhere. And it's because, you know, a couple of people just wanted to come together and make a difference. And it just keeps growing. I mean, this thing is just mind boggling for me. The difference I think I've made, uh, I am, I, I'm really, really not sure except for sometimes when I look into the eyes of the people who um, who say thank you. And those are the only two words sometimes that they can say because they are so broken. Because I ask myself sometimes, is what I'm doing really making a difference? And then it's for the the man that walks out the door here and then comes back and say, please, can I just have a hug? I've got five kids sitting at home. One had six and his wife had just got ran over by a car. And he said, I used to donate. I made $2,500 every week and I would donate to a food pantry. And he stood in front of me crying because they'd hired a young kid in his place. He said, I have six kids and I don't know how I'm going to feed them. I think it's those moments where I think that I'm doing something right when that man just lays his head on my shoulder and said, you're my angel. And I think that 
anybody can be an angel. You know, you, you question what, what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis, but I'm reminding of what my mother and my father says that only what you do for Jesus Christ is gonna last. And so I don't measure things by what I do on earth. I measure them by the value that I will receive in eternity because that's the one that's gonna have the final answer. And so if I can just change one person, which every time we open up these doors, I know that that's what we're doing, then I know that I've made some kind of difference. And I just wanna leave a legacy like my parents taught me. I wanna teach that to my kids. And I wanna teach that to my friends and my family because you can hear those people out there getting food. And I was one of those people. And I'm just grateful to be able to serve. It's Matthew 23 and 11 that says, He that is greatest among you, let him be your servant. And so there's a lot of great people outside those doors. And I'm trying to make everyone around me great. So that's the difference I want to make is just making people, ordinary people, great people. And that's through service. I would say if you've lost hope, um, just look into the eyes of somebody that you know and love and uh, just tell them how much you love them and watch how their eyes sparkle up. And my mother always says hope just means having only positive emotions. I would say that if you've lost hope, bring it back to those positive emotions. You know, sometimes people come in here and they're complaining about some of the things that they don't have, but then I tell them, but you walked in here, you have legs. You, you can smile if you want to give it to me, you can share a smile with it. So I would say just look inside yourself at the positive. Think about five things that you have, not have not, but what you have, and then the hope will come back. And then surround yourself with positive people or volunteer. If you think that you're doing bad, go volunteer at one of the charities and you will see that there's somebody so much worse off than, the, off than you. And I promise you, you'll get your hope back and say, I think and I hope I can make it just one more day. Coming up next on Hope Help Heals Tour of Giving.